All right, so when I say check, you all say check back to me. That lets me know that you got me, you get me, and we can move on. Check? Check. All right, I like it. So the first thing, the wild file code. Um, yep, everybody. <laughs> Go ahead and get your phones out. Go ahead and get your phones. All right, well, hold on. He said, hold on, hold on. All right. All right, here we go. So the Wi-Fi code, the username is all caps and it's PCC. That's really simple, right? All caps PCC. The password is all lowercase letters and it is student. So S-T-U-D-E-N-T, -E -E no S, student, lowercase. That's the password. All right, everybody got the password? Can we move forward? Check. Uh oh. All right. Okay. Everybody's connected. One more minute. Okay. All right. All right. So we're gonna move forward. The next thing I just want to make you all aware that the restrooms. Um, are located um, behind the wall that's behind us. So if you leave out of this building, excuse me, the room, and you take a right, it's going to be on your, it's going to be the first right um, on your right hand side. And so that's where all of the restrooms are located. Um, also, we have a hashtag for this event um, for everyone who um, just got the Wi-Fi code. I know you may be on social media. While you're on social media, make sure you're posting about this event on um, all social media outlets. And the hashtag for this event is Main Summit. 2K17. So that's Main Summit 2017. But the hashtag is Main Summit 2K17. And so it's our hope that you all will post pictures, uh, maybe even post some inspirational quotes that you give within the sessions. Um, and actually, we have a prize. And so the person that um, makes the most hashtags, and that's the Main Summit 2K17, will actually receive $20 in cash at the end of this program today. Yep. So, <laughs> so that's one of the that's one of the rewards for coming today, alright? So make sure you use that hashtag. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on and get in with the program. Before we get started though, I would love to know who all is in the room. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna do a quick little roll call, if you will. So I heard that the baddest school in North Carolina was here. I heard that the baddest high school in North Carolina was in the room. So if you will, I just want you to make some noise for this baddest school. And so I heard that the baddest school was Aiden Griffin High School. that I would like to bring to the stage 
is one of the organizers of this great event. This is a great brother of mine. Um, Mr. Jasmine Spain is going to come um, just to give you all the purpose of today as well as the invocation. Can we welcome Mr. Jasmine Spain? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Let's stand and hold hands and give thanks to you. Let us pray. Let us pray. No, out of respect, let's give thanks. Great creator, even with a million tongues, we cannot say thank you enough. Thank you for your presence, and thank you for this moment in history. And if I may be selfish for a moment, we thank you for each and every young king represented in this room. Let your will and manifestation be obvious, reminding them of the plans you have for them. Plans to prosper them and not to harm them, but plans to give them hope and a future. In the great creator's name, Selah and Amen. Good morning, beautiful people, especially my young kings in here. It is with great pleasure on behalf of PCC's Next Level Minority Male Success Initiative, the main initiative LLC, and Masterminds at Work Incorporated that we welcome you to the main summit. Please give yourselves a hand. <laughs> young kings, today is about you. Today we will strategically and aggressively pursue the hearts minds and souls of each and every one of you will be taking steps into your future. One of my mentors and heroes, El Hajj Malik El Shabazz, said that the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. So take it upon yourselves, young kings, to take acceptance for what you have for the rest of your life and what it will look like. The mantra for this inaugural event is it is not only what we do, but also what we do not do, for which we are accountable. This mantra sets the stage for our theme. Stephen Covey's coined phrase, accountability breeds responsibility. The model for the main initiative is your success is your responsibility. And I ask that you adopt this model as you seek to fulfill the purpose that the creator has for your life. This also means that it's time out for excuses. It's time out for blaming others for not reaching your goals. It's time out for not caring about yourself. Young kings, you already have one strike against you. So that means that you will have to work extra hard to defy the historical evils that this country has purposely designed for your failure. This means that you have to fight. Fight for what you believe in because your life depends on it. And those becoming behind you deserve it. Young kings, remember taking action without having good intentions only causes a reaction. Having good intentions without taking any action will lead to regret. However, having good intentions while taking action will only produce results. And that is what the acronym MAIN is all about. Addressing these issues and needs in the way only Brother Malcolm would say it, by any means necessary. Thank you and welcome to the inaugural MAIN Summit. All right, so at this time, what we're going to do is have some special greetings. And so the first greeting will come from Dr. G. Dennis Massey. He's going to give the presidential greeting. And following Dr. Massey, uh, we will have the student services greeting by Ms. Joanne Series. So can we um, give them a round of applause as they come to the program, to the stadium? Thank you. Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well today. Uh, it's a little bit easier to find a parking space at Pitt Community College today. Uh, with schools pretty much out, grades collected, uh, this is the end of our fall term, uh, and we are so glad that you are here. Uh, I give w greetings, really, from the faculty and staff here at Pitt Community College, the Board of Trustees, and the entire student body. Uh, we have a large operation here at Pitt Community College. We have a large reason for being, which is really to educate and empower people for success. We do that in many, many ways. 
both short courses, long courses, certificates, degree programs. At the heart of what we do is community. And that includes all of you right here because you are part of this community that we are serving. We do the educating and empowering by providing a variety of programs. Those programs range from building construction, welding and automotive, to computer science, to health sciences, to university transfer, uh, and we're very proud of the uh, programs that we offer and of the students that finish those programs. A word about that in a minute, but let me just return for a second to the idea of community. This could not be a success today without the strong leadership of our own employees and our people who are here from the community that have helped make this possible. So could I have all of them stand and you young people in the, in the room, please give them a hand as they stand. All the volunteers, speakers, and people who made this program possible, please stand. Thank you. We'll get a chance to meet them later. Uh, very impressive group, and we are so proud to host this, or, this group today. Uh, it's not easy being a student in today's higher education world. Uh, not only are there the pressures of getting the job done, taking care of all the details, paying for it, and keeping going, moving from one term to the next and one program, uh, but those issues and needs that are going to be addressed today are also particularly strong for black males. Uh, we have done a, a very dedicated effort to communicate with minority students and we have seen those numbers go at Pitt Community College. The success stories have been many, but there's still far more for us to do. To give you an example, first off, you know, you have a tremendous advantage here at Pitt Community College. What do you think the percentage of male students are here at Pitt Community College of the entire student body? Let's have a guess. What percentage are males of our student body? 65? No. No, 55, lower. 30, now it's higher. 40. 40%. 40 percent. 40 percent of our students are male. That's a pretty good percentage, I think. Do you think so? I mean, I'd like to see it higher, but it's a pretty attractive environment for you to come to. A lot of women here. <laughs> And believe me, those women are focused. They are moving towards a degree, towards a certificate. They have an agenda in mind. And a lot of our other students do too, a lot of our male students. But the male students, the minority male students, have got to step up. Right now, our enrollment retention from fall to spring, this is last year because we don't have this year's statistics right now, the percentage of all students who continue from fall to spring is about 78%. It's gonna be higher this year, but last year it was 78%. The percentage of minority male students was 72%. That sounds close, but it's not the same. There's a 6% there's a difference there. We wanna see that difference get smaller. We wanna see more of our minority male students move from fall to spring. From fall to fall, that's from freshman to sophomore year, the number gets even, the gap gets wider. Between about 50% of our entire student population goes from fall to the following fall. Only about 41% of our minority male students continue from fall to fall. Again, the competition is here, the programs are great, the faculty are trying hard, but we've got to see more effort from the minority male students. So what we're gonna to talk to you about today is a broad array of topics, but all that set aside, we wanna see you move forward in your careers, wherever it is. 
Higher education is often a good thing to think about. Pitt Community College provides a high quality, low cost, great way to get started. And we would like to see you come here. I look forward to seeing you on campus in the future. And on behalf of PCC and everybody here, welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I just want to, on behalf of uh, Student Services Division, add my greetings to Dr. Massey's. My name is Joanne Sears, and I am just so thrilled to see all of you here this morning. Wow, you can actually just feel the energy in this room. I wish I could bottle that energy up and, 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 and bring it home with me. I'm just, um, you can just see that the, the excitement and the energy, and that, that just pleases me so much. Um, I feel like I'm looking out at not just the future of PCC, but the future, as Dr. Massey said, of our community. And um, I'm telling you, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I, I really am so pleased that you are all here today, have taken time out. Uh, I know this is a busy time of year, but um, this just shows that your, your commitment to your own future and, and to your education, uh, for just, just you being here today, is really something that you can be very proud of. As Dr. Massey said, Pitt is a great institution. Um, we offer so many support services through student support, through the Student Services Division, through academic affairs, through our caring faculty and staff. Um, we would welcome you here and would love to see you here and would support you every, every step of the way. But even if Pitt is not your path, I just want to encourage you today, we've got a full lineup of, 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 of really important topics and things. I am so proud of Jasmine Spain and, and, and the committee that has put this together. They have done a fantastic job um, and have some really interesting things to share with you. Just want to encourage you as you're here today network with one another, ask questions, take advantage of what we've got here. We are here to support you. Without you, the college doesn't exist. So remember, you are the most important people here today. You are our VIPs, and I want you to feel welcome and comfortable in sharing and asking questions and in just getting the most that you can out of this day. Welcome again, and please enjoy yourselves, and um, I'm very proud of each and every one of you. Thank you so much. If you can hear me clap once, if you can hear me clap twice, if you can hear me say, oh yeah. oh yeah. All right, so we're gonna continue with special greetings uh, from our community. Next, we're gonna have greetings from the city of Greenville. We're gonna invite up Mrs. Bernita Demery. Um, after Mrs. Demery, we're gonna have greetings from our governor's office. And so we're going to welcome uh, Miss Maddie Lazo Chatterton. So in that order, could we please give them a round of applause? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Bernita Demery, and I am the Director of Financial Services for the City of Greenville, North Carolina. I bring you greetings on behalf of the city and want you to know that we are here for you. We are here for you because we put our money where our mouth is. The city has a budget of approximately $400 million a year, and we are using that to invest in you. We are here to give you jobs, employment opportunities with the city of Greenville, and we would love for you, as you become adults, to make Greenville your home, raise your families here, send your kids to school here, and be a part of our community. On behalf of the mayor, which is PJ Connolly, and all the members of the city council, welcome to the Minority Male Summit. Follow up with me if you have questions about those job opportunities with the city of Greenville, not just during the summer, but year round. On behalf of the city of Greenville, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's so wonderful to be here today in Winterville for the very first time in my life. Love the landscaping and love the landscaping here, too. Uh, 
Let me first say how honored I am to be with you today. I could not be prouder to have the privilege of serving and representing the 75th Governor of North Carolina, Roy Cooper. In the Office of Public Engagement, we work to address the concerns of organizations, families, and individuals across North Carolina. I can tell you without hesitation that our governor cares about the needs and concerns of every resident in North Carolina. His mission is simple. He wants North Carolinians to be better educated, healthier, and have more money in their pockets for years to come. He wants people to have what they need to live more intentional, abundant lives. Our administration works every day to help achieve these goals, but certainly we can't do it alone. Today I am here to express our sincere appreciation for the great work you are doing to contribute to the betterment of our communities and state. I am humbled to be with you for this occasion. On behalf of Governor Cooper, I commend you for your ongoing work and to help us build as a North Carolina that is truly better for everyone. Thank you. At this time, we're going to welcome back up Mr. Jasmine Spain for a special um, recognition, and then we'll have a special presentation by Mr. Jalen Hardy. Let's give it up for Mr. Spain. You know events like this just don't come together. It requires vision, effort, and support. I would like to take a moment and acknowledge all of those who came together in their own unique way to make this event possible. So if you would, please stand as you're acknowledged, and I ask that you hold your applause until you're told otherwise. So my co-chair and right-hand man in this event, Stephanie McGee. Our planning team, Amy Stegen, in the back with the food, uh, Dr. Nicholas Vick, in the back, Justin Fuller, he's standing in the back as well, and Travis Kendall, he's in the back also. Uh, our MC, Mr. Robert Taylor. Our IT gurus, Chris Anderson and Jamie Bullock. Jamie's in the back. Our dynamic presenters, Dr. DeWarren Langley, Kenneth Joyner, Warren Moore, in the back. Harold McMinkin, and Joshua Burley. Our group leaders, Derek Mullins, who's also our head men's basketball coach. Greg Massenberg, Maurice Jordan, and Christopher Bridges. They all lined up the wall. The lovely ladies who assisted with registration, April Moore, Ms. Lenore Harvey, and Felicia Bridges. The men of our next level minority male success initiative, we wave your hands in the back. And if all the faculty and staff and students at Pitt Community College, please stand. Please give them a hand. Now for our sponsors, Ms. Maddie Chatterton from the Office of the Governor, please stand. Ricky Stanley and representatives of the Main Initiative, LLC. Tanisha McGee and representatives of Masterminds at Work Incorporated. Sarah Maiden and representatives of Chick-fil-A. Ricky and Bernita Demery. Russell Williams and representatives of Fresh Market. Mr. Larry Thomas, and representatives of the Thomas Mentoring and Leadership Academy. Jennifer Congleton, and representatives of Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church. Ms. Lenora Harvey, and representatives of Hayes Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. Chad Tucker, 
and representatives of the greatest fraternity in the world, Alpha Phi Fraternity Incorporated. <laughs> Crystal Sykes, the representatives of Custom Creations. Tamika Wardlow and Terry Cox, representatives from East Carolina University. Jeffrey Pope, the representatives of WorldCat. Officer Richie Williams, and representatives of the Greenville Cops and Balls. Representatives of the Bachelor Benedict Club. Mr. Todd Pipke, and representatives of the Rocky Mount Preparatory School. Mr. Tim Wooler, and representatives of the Winterville, Winterville Baptist Church and Spirit Arrow Systems. And then we have some, uh, some sponsors who cannot be present, but I'd like to uh, make mention of them. Global Partners for Fathers and Families, LLC, HC Composites, NM Royalty, Zaxby's, Charity McGruber in the Prince George County, Maryland School System, the North Carolina State University, Chosen Audacity Incorporated, and North Carolina Central University School of Law. Please give them a hand. <laughs> and while we give thanks to those who made today's event possible, we'll also like to take a moment and pay homage. If you would, direct your attention to the last page of your program. In honor and memory of Mr. Edward J. Turner. Edward Turner was a former PCC student and co-founder of the Next Level Minority Male Mentoring Program, which is largely the foundation of this event. Edward was an avid learner as a PCC student, as a graduate of the Business Administration Program, and was last enrolled at North Carolina A&T University in the Management Information Systems Bachelor's Program. Everett was also a musician and served as the voice of the Marching Pirates, already the pregame and halftime rituals for the Department of Athletics at all ECU home games, as well as the r and Carriers Louisiana Bowl in New Orleans, Louisiana. Everett was also active in the community, responding to fire, medical, hazmat, and rescue emergencies within the city limits and beyond as a fire officer. Edward also spent time mentoring the youth at the local Boys and Girls Club in Winterville as a team leader. Edward Turner embodied everything this event and those in support of it represent. Edward's legacy will not, only, will not be forgotten and the inaugural May Summit serves as a duplication of his efforts on the grandest scale possible. Thank you, Edward, for your service to PCC and the greater Greenville community. For you young kings who will transition from the upper echelon high school program to the next level program here at PCC, remember those that laid the foundation for a minority male pro mentor program to exist. At this very moment, I would like to ask Ms. Ricky and Renita Dimery to please escort Ms. Angela Moore to the stage. Every year this summit will be held in honor and memory of a different individual that represents saving their lives and salvaging the dreams, salvaging the dreams of our minority men. With that said, it is with great honor that your son, Edward Turner, be honored at this inaugural event. I present to you this plaque that reads, The Main Initiative LLC presents the 2017 Main Man Award in memory of Mr. Edward Turner. The inaugural May Summit, Pitt Community College, December 18, 2017.
I just want to say, on behalf of Edward and his family, we thank you. Um, I remember when he was approached by Dr. Spell, and uh, he was asked to be a part of the Next Level organization. He and um, Jamel Cannon, um, who remain the best of friends, and um, who is my other son. <laughs> um, this program is a wonderful program. Use it to the best of your ability and knowledge. Allow these young men to help you along the way. Whatever questions or problems you may have, these are some great mentors that you have in your presence and mentors that you will actually be able to talk to today. Um, be the best that you can be. Be all that you want to be. Thank you. So at this time, we'll have a special presentation um, by Mr. Jaden Harden. How's everyone? Good, good. Yeah, man, I'm a little nervous, as y'all can see, but it's all right. Listen, I'm Jaden Hardy, man, I'm 24 years old. A um, little, little background about me, though. Um, I went to North Carolina a t State University. I was, um, my boy. Exactly. <laughs> 24 years old, and um, basically I do spoken word because at my senior year in college, my senior year in college, I got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So I couldn't walk for a good long time. <laughs> and uh, so I was asked to, you know, get this platform, and I, I just want to share a little bit, you know. Um, little bit of my life and I, I like to talk so I might stop doing slow for a few minutes. Alright, but um <clears throat> I'm reminded of the letter I wrote that night to my mind. I was hospitalized, in the bed afflicted, conflicted, visualizing the type of life I would live upon suicide. Now that the old me was gone I personally felt I had every reason to feel alone. I mean, it didn't help that in that very moment, my vulnerability was so high to the point it was only right for me to see my wrong. You know, on the onset of graduating grade school, summer 12, it seemed like everybody and their mom, they gave me counsel on, JV, you need to focus, man. JV, you gotta focus, especially going to a &T. But me being me, I was too busy trying to stroke my identity. Yeah, I'm gonna just talk. <laughs> the life of, um, I was still be trying to stroke my identity. In the life of freedom, I was Yeah, man, I ain't never had this platform, but it's alright. Alright, so basically, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just talk. So, around summer 2012, um, I went to college, and I ain't really, I didn't, I didn't really have any direction. I didn't, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just, I wanted to go to ENT. I was just like you guys, man. I was just like you guys, just living life, happy. You know, I didn't have any mentorship. I, I was raised without a father, you know, but I had a strong mother. And like, what I realized is what you like, you can never miss. But I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the pain that I fostered from the very beginning. And I had mentors in my life as well, so I got to college and, you know, it was just different. Like it was different, I was in a whole different demographic. I was out of Aiden, North Carolina, for yo, those of y'all that was hating on Aiden. <laughs> you know, I, I was out of Aiden. 
But honestly, um, what I realize is, man, like, you have an opportunity. And we don't put a lot of value on the opportunity. We don't, we just know, we feel like life is given to us. So basically, this is the part where I just wanted to explain my MS. I got, um, I got sick, man, I couldn't walk. I, I lost 30 pounds, like, I lost all the bitches now that my left eye. You know, I was 20 years old, man, not too much older than you. 20 years old and I, I couldn't walk. I played basketball all my life. No God didn't place anything on me. And that's the difference. When things happen in life, people automatically equate that to God doing that to us. You see what I'm saying? But that didn't happen. I needed to go through something. You know, my life was going out of whack. Like it was definitely going out of whack. I, I lost all focus of what I was in school for. Yeah, school is not always for book knowledge. Like, and I needed something to help me translate high school from being grown in college, you know, to actually understand why I was there. So I got MS, I was messed up. Like, I had to come home. And it was just crazy, so I, I wrote this letter to my mind. And it only consisted of one line. And I asked God if you can give me another chance, you will get the glory out of my life. So, without further hesitation, ladies and gentlemen, this is my story. This is my diary. This is my emancipation, the proclamation without reservation, I will inspire. Your desire to be motivated by my struggles, long suffering, short suffers keeps me going on. It's got to be an expected end. There is strength within. Look, it's okay to be different. The only difference is we are leaders, but yet we allow statistics to depict our very becoming aware of our sense of direction. The mind state of Harriet Tubman was she had no GPS, but a goal of somewhere. Out in the crowd, there's a young man afraid to smile because the whole world has placed him under the denial of his own. Confidence. So he chooses to accept the fact that he is categorized as inferior. Him and his friends embrace the endearment of addressing each other as N words. Future women of creation, B words, verbs that begin with F words, but in class, you can't even spell A word. So tell me, how does that work? Tell me, how does that work? See, I can get up here and I can do spoken word and poetry and everything. But it starts with you. Like, being in high school, man, you, you, you have teachers. They might not give you a proper mentorship. But see, you have to align yourself in a position. The in crowd is not always the best crowd. Like, I can't really say anything to get your attention because when I leave, your lives are still gonna be the same if that's what you wanna choose to do. But you have to start with the identity of yourself. You got to know who you are. Know who you are. Know what you want to go. Like, no, it's so many pivotal people in this room. When this is over, reach out. You know, like, hey, man, how do I get that? How do I make it there? You know what I mean? Like, I'm 18 years old. I'm 17. I'm 16. Man, look, I want to be in this position when I get there. You know, how do I get there? It's okay to be different. The only difference is we are leaders. Look, I was raised without a father. Young man, Russell Williams right here, I was raised without a father. He was the only mentor in my life. But I had a strong mother. A lot of people don't have none of that. But it's pivotal people here, man. Like, it's pivotal people. I was supposed to be doing spoken word. <laughs> I was but like, but... It just, man, I don't know, man, I, I never had this platform, and I, I do want to reach, you know, I want to reach out and, and talk and, and just and be there for you guys, man, you know. Yeah, I was collegiate, A&T is a great school, but it is a school that requires a lot of exclusive devotion and focus, just like Pitt, just like any other school. But you can't go there with the same mindset of high school. You know, high school, they can give you a little extra time on your test. 
They can give you a little extra time to do this and that. But when you when you grown, you really out on your own, man. Like you really out on your own. I love every last one of y'all. <laughs> I really do. Like I really love every last one of y'all. When y'all was walking in, I was just looking, man, like just living through every last one of you. Trying to figure out, hey man, who who can I really reach with my spoken word? But Oh no, man, I'm just, I'm captivated right now, you know, like, I'm, I guess, I'm, <laughs> I'm captivated right now, like, I'm happy to be here, man, and like, basically, I can say anything, man, you only get inspired by yourself, you might not remember everything I said, but you remember how I made you feel when I said, it. you, my words don't do anything for you, it's just inspiration. But when you leave, you got to make up in your mind, what do you want to do? Life, everybody say, you're not going to, nobody's going to give anything to you. Nobody's going to do this, which, which is true. But there are pivotal people in here that will have you along the way. But you have to market yourself. Market meaning put yourself out there. Give yourself Market your brand, market who you are as a person. It's not all about race, man. Like, yes, yes, it, and not like, but it's not all about race because you don't know who you're gonna be working beside in the work office. Race, sexuality, whatever. You have to learn how to succumb to every situation. Like, definitely, man, when, I'm, when I walk up, I do wanna talk to you guys, man, and, uh, I know you was looking for some spoken word, but yeah, I was nervous. <laughs> <laughs> like that, but we're going to make it work. So uh, Mr. Stephen McGee, get ready. As the founder of the Masterminds at Work Incorporated, a nonprofit devoted to serving and empowering at-risk youth with an emphasis on African-American males, Stephen McGee is a passionate about helping stimulate positive change in, Afri in the African-American community. This passion is also exemplified by his educational background by receiving his Bachelor's of Social Work from East Carolina University and a Master's of Social Work from the University of Southern California. Stephen's passion is also manifest in his work experience and the social worker program coordinator and serving at risk youth. Stephen also coaches the fifth and sixth grade boys basketball team considered, excuse me, consisting of primarily African American males. Part time, Stephen works in a mobile crisis uh, unit. The crisis uh, unit uh, situation, uh, excuse me, it, to crisis situations surrounding family turmoil, psychiatric disorders, substance use disorders, and a range of other concerns. Within this position, Stephen witnesses how a lack of opportunity, motivation, positive supports, and a healthy family life lead to reasons for crisis involvement. Besides professional work and his experience relevant to the target population, Stefan is a product of what a positive male mentor mentorship and supplemental, supplemental academic and social support can do for a young African-American male growing up in a single family headed household. Stefan has spent a majority of his life being raised right here in Pitt County, seeing how different his life has manifest thus far compared to many of his peers in the same family situation, but no positive role models 
or limited support otherwise. Along with his professional experience, Stephen's purpose became evident. Stephen feels a strong sense of duty to uplift the generation of African-American youth, generate significant positive change within the African-American community with his immediate surroundings along with the greater community as a whole through, in through intentional and meaningful programming designed to address the root causes of stagnation and specific population. This mission is guided by an African-American proverb that states, an African proverb that states, excuse me, I am because you are, and because you are, therefore I am, which implies that our success and our struggles are connected, therefore we have the responsibility to uplift, serve, and guide each other. With that, if you will give me a resounding applause and welcome, Mr. Stephen McGee. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me and allowing me to, to have this platform to speak to you. Again, like he said, I don't know how I'm gonna follow up after Javen, but I'm gonna do my best. So there are a number, there are an endless number of things that we can question in life. It's one thing that we can question but really can't change, and that thing is death. We all understand at some point in time we'll experience death in the physical form. Now, I don't mean to sound so morbid, but follow me for a second, you'll get where I'm going. It's not so much death that I'm worried about questioning, it's will you even identify why you're alive in the first place before you do? That's the real question. And then even after you address this question, and I'll ask it a different way real quick. Will you identify your life's purpose while you still have the chance to? Now you may not think that's such a profound question or something to take serious, but there are plenty of cemeteries filled with people who probably wish they had seriously addressed that question and made an intentional effort to. So once you address that question and you do figure out your purpose, there's another question that follows that. That question is, what now? What are you gonna do now? Now that you have identified your purpose and know what you're here for, what are you gonna do about it? So there are times where you have to make an intentional effort to address your purpose and walk into that purpose. So again, identifying your purpose isn't as difficult as you may think. It's, it's a matter of identifying your natural God-given talent that people find value in and then pairing that with a, with a passion to help others and better society. So, for instance, my talent that has been identified by others and by myself is my ability to inspire people to be better, to do better, and to live on purpose and with purpose. So that may not be a talent that you may widely recognize or people may identify as a talent, not my ability to play basketball or an ability to sing or perform in front of people, which you may identify readily as a, as a talent of people that, that can be famous. And your talent may, may not be as what you consider something to glorify. For instance, your talent may be something, be the ability to make someone laugh. It may be your ability to cook. It may be your intellect. Whatever comes natural to you, people find value in, and you can better someone else's life. Someone else's life is your superpower. That's what your purpose is. That's why you're here. So again, notice I said it's not extremely difficult to identify your life's purpose. The challenging part, the difficult part is, once you identify your purpose, is making the decision and the intentional effort to walk in your purpose. That's where the real challenge is. So once you've made this, this choice, this decision to walk into your purpose, there's two things that you should take into consideration. The first one I mentioned earlier briefly is intentionality or being intentional about what it is that you do. Intentionality pretty much is where your intentions align with your purpose or guided by your purpose, come into alignment with your actions as you work toward accomplishing the goal. Now, by a show of hands, you don't have to raise your hands, but you'll see where I'm going. 
by a show of hands, is there anybody who has aspired to in the past or right now to be a professional athlete or a performer, a rapper, or anything like that? All right, cool. And I'm not here to discourage you or, or to, to discourage you from pursuing that goal or to talk about how the odds are against you because in, in actuality, as minority men, the odds are against us in more ways than one, and I'll come back to that. But I'm going to give you an example real quick of a, of a young man who aspired to be a professional athlete. So the young man was asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, an NBA player. And so the response was, okay, I hear a lot of young men say that these days. How much or how often are you working on your game? And so the young man responds, all the time. Matter of fact, I was up till 3 a.m. last night, this morning, getting it in. So automatically you're like, okay, he's really about his life. Ball is life. And so then another question is, so where do you have access to a gym or a court to be getting it in playing ball at 3 a.m. in the morning? So the young man looked up, he was confused, like, you don't need a gym to get it in to work on your game. Long story short, this young man was talking about his my player on 2K. He was like, I'm trying to get my my player in the all-star game. So, <laughs> so funny, but not funny. This is, I, I use that in, as an example to show how oftentimes our intentions and our actions are not aligned. You judge the quality of a tree by the fruit that it bears, not by what you wish or hope that tree to produce. You can only tell its quality by what it produces. So, intentionality requires action. By action, I mean taking control of the things that are within your control while you have the opportunity to before you're, you have to react to those things. So by taking action, one of the, an example of that and something that you can do right now is mind the company you keep. Regardless of whatever your goal is, the people you surround yourself with will either be your greatest limitation or your greatest inspiration. I'll say that again. Regardless of what it is you're trying to accomplish, the people you surround yourself will define you. They will be your greatest limitation or your greatest inspiration. Another instance in which you can take action now while you have the opportunity to is to wake up a little earlier, go to sleep a little later, and reinvest that time into developing and working towards manifesting your vision, whatever that may be. We are all given the same 24 hours when we're blessed to see a day, but it's how you maximize that time that's going to define or dictate your progress or lack thereof. So, essentially, be intentional about everything that you do. And if you're intentional about one thing, it will spill over into everything else because you'll see the benefits. So be intentional. Take action. Now, as young men get ready to transition from high school to college, hopefully, or at least into the workforce to be a productive citizen, I challenge you, if this is your goal to go to college, don't wait for somebody to have to tell you that you need to apply for school. Don't wait for somebody to have to tell you to apply for financial aid. Don't wait for somebody to have to tell you that high school is nothing like college and you need to develop good study habits now before you get there. Everybody talks about, oh, I'm trying to secure the bag. If that's your goal, how you doing that if you don't have plans to go to school or open up a business or do something productive? You're not securing a bag. Maybe a grocery bag as you're taking it to the car for somebody else, and I don't knock that as a profession if that's what you want to do, but if you want to secure the bag, be be intentional about what it is that you're doing. Now there are times in life where we're forced to be reactive. We have to learn to respond to things, things in life that, that can't change or that happen unexpectedly. This is where that second thing I said you should take into consideration as you prepare um, to, to walk into your purpose. That's responsibility. Now, when I say responsibility, I say that I'm talking about I'm going to talk to you about it a little differently than you may have, than you may be familiar with. So I'm not talking, it goes beyond just ownership. When I talk about responsibility, I'm talking about responsibility. So when, when the model says your success is your responsibility, your success is ultimately defined by your ability to respond to the things in life that you can't change or that happen unexpectedly. So in other words, your responsibility will dictate your success in life. Now, remember I talked about how there are several things, as, as minority men, there are some unique challenges and barriers that we'll face. 
So let's talk about that for a second. According to some research I've done, minority men or minority students, specifically African American students, scored the lowest and performed the worst in K-12 education and also in college. That's across the board. Let's take it a step further. So here in Pitt County, these, these, these numbers are maybe a few years old, but it reflects the trend, and I don't think they're out of date to the point where it won't make what I'm about to say relevant, but approximately 24%, 25 and 26% of African American students are not considered college or career ready. To say it another way, that's about 75% of African American students who are not considered what the state considers college and career ready. You should take that personal, because I'm talking about y'all that are sitting right here in these seats. Maybe not you specifically, but I'm talking about you. I'm talking about people you go to school with. I'm talking about Pitt County schools. You're not college and career ready. That says a lot. It's one thing when we talk about numbers and statistics for the world, we talk about for the U.S. across the board, or even Lenore County, Craven County. I'm talking about Pitt County, the county that you're in, the schools that you're attending. You should take that personal. But it's pretty much, again, it goes back to your ability to respond to those things. So again, there are a lot of factors that go into these unique challenges that we face as young, young minority men, young black men. We can talk about the systems that have set these things up for us or how we don't have as many opportunities, whatever the case may be. What I'm here to say to you is so what? Not so what in a way to undermine the people that are fighting for equality and fighting for justice and things of that nature, not so what in terms of that. I'm saying so what in terms of these things are not going to change fast enough for you to use them as an excuse to hinder your success. They're not going away. Not right now. Not today, not tomorrow. So what are you going to do to respond to that? You going to make excuses or are you going to learn to adapt and develop your response ability? Again, that will determine your success ultimately as a person. So, one thing that life has taught me this year more than anything else is that life moves out of the way for a person with purpose. To say it another way, all things work for the good of the man who lives a purpose-filled life and who has purpose in his life. It will dictate your responsibility in a way, your purpose will, in a way that when you're hit with adversity or hit with what you once saw as a challenge, as just another opportunity for you to flex on and demonstrate and tap into your superpower and accomplish these things and be what nobody thought you could be. So let's go back to the young man who was getting in in 2K. Go back to that example. After that interaction that I gave you the example of, that young man decided to to be intentional about his goal of, of becoming an NBA player. So, again, he eliminated the negative influences. He began to get up early and go to sleep later and use that time to work on his game, but not just his game in terms of actual practice, but his academics because he understood the importance of the academic side. You can't be an athlete without being a student first. So, he became intentional about those things. That intentional effort spilled over into every other area of his life. As a result, he became one of the top high school prospects in, in the county. He went on to play two years of junior college. He suffered an injury that stopped his basketball career, partly, but he went on to graduate from college and got his bachelor's degree. He later went on to get his master's degree, started a family. He made positive impressions on people along the way, and what he really learned was that his purpose wasn't in the, in, to be in the NBA to be a basketball player. His superpower wasn't his ability to play ball. His superpower was the ability to inspire others to be great, to walk into their purpose, and to live an intentional life, to live with purpose and on purpose. Because he was intentional about something, it spilled over into every other area of his life. And because that young man was intentional about basketball and about developing his skill, he is able to stand before you today and give this speech in hopes that it will inspire you to be bigger and better than anybody ever thought you could be. 
My name is Stephanie McGee. I thank you for allowing me to be here and speak to you. I hope you take this serious, the events and everything that leave from here. Go out and live on purpose and with purpose.